Hey everybody, welcome back to Code Dynamic Websites with PHP. This lecture is called Simple Form Validation and Submission Part 2. Let's jump right in. Okay. The next thing that we want to do is set up and build our email message. So essentially what we did here is we performed all the very basic um, actions we'll need to do when checking a PHP form. So we check to see if there's a header injection, killed the script if there was. If not, then we continue on down. We have, uh, we check to see if our contact submit form, contact submit button was pressed. And in there we stored some variables, did the header injection test, check to see if the fields were empty. If we're all good, then we're going to keep going down the script. So what we need to do is construct this email message, add the recipient email to a variable. So who is going to receive the message from this form? Let's call this variable two. Let's use your own email here. I'm just going to say you're at email.com. You could put your actual email, so you could test this a little later. Create a subject. So that will be subject variable, we'll call it. And we're going to construct a little message in here. Name, because we know the name variable. Sent you a message via your contact form. That will be the subject. Next up, we will construct the actual message. And this is where we're going to create a message variable. And we'll say equals name. So this is what's going to show up in the actual body of the message name. And then we're going to say the name variable. And in an email, we need to break this onto a new line and we can't post HTML in here in your email message uh, in a simple contact form. So we need to do a line break and to put, do a line break in an email, you just go backslash R backslash N. That is a line break down here. We're going to do the message variable again, but we're going to concatenate a value to that. And we'll say email email backslash r backslash n message variable concatenate another value onto the message variable message so the message itself we're going to break a line here backslash r backslash n and then the message variable or the message variable so the reason why i did this is because i want the message uh heading i guess you could call it on a different line than the message itself because the, the message in the text area will probably be multiple lines and I want it to look clean. Okay, so we've constructed the message, created the subject, added the recipient email. Now, let's check to see if the subscribe checkbox was checked. So if the subscribe checkbox was checked, so that's like this. If if statement is set, check the post collection for the subscribe value here. So the name subscribe from that checkbox that will be sent along in the post collection. It checks to see if it was actually checked. Okay. And post subscribe is equal to subscribe. Now, what does this mean? Wasn't this good enough? Post subscribe, if that was set? Technically, yes. But what we're wanting to do here is double check. So if post subscribe it was sent along in the post collection and the value of it is equal to subscribe, then let's carry on. Add a new line to the message variable. Message, concatenate a new value. 
Let's do a couple line breaks. Backslash R, backslash N, backslash R, backslash N. Please, now you don't need to put a space here. You can just write it right afterwards. Add the email variable to the mailing list. Line break. Backslash R, backslash N. Perfect. Okay. Outside of your if statement, since we've checked to see the checkbox was checked, let's make the message variable look a little bit more tidy. So message equals, this is where we use the word wrap function, word wrap. So we need to pass it a variable, string, and a numer numeric value of how, how wide you want, how many characters you want each line to have. 72 is what I'm going to say. There we go. So this will take the message, wrap the long string of text that will likely be typed into it, and wrap the message to 72 lines per line, or sorry, 72 characters per line. Okay. Now we need to set the mail headers. And mail headers are required when you send an email because it lets the email client like Gmail or Hotmail, Apple Mail, so on and so forth. The MIME version, content type, who it's from, and if it's a priority, things like that. So let's set the mail headers into a variable. So a headers variable. Let's start off with the MIME dash version 1.0 and break the line backslash r backslash n. So the MIME version is 1.0. Headers. Let's concatenate a value on there. Content type. This is just plain text, so text slash plain. And the char set equals ISO-8859-1. Break the line. You're probably wondering, how do you know all this off by heart? Well, I don't. I did it once by following an instructor who taught me how to do this back a few years back and did some tutorials. And I just kept it in my, in a default kind of template contact form script. And I just copy and paste it every time. You don't need to memorize this. You can look it up to see the different things you can send through mail headers. Very easy to find tutorials online. But this is kind of a basic way of doing it. Don't worry if you can't remember it because I certainly do not. Okay, next line, headers. Concatenate another uh, value in that variable. From, who is the message from? Put a sp the colon and then a space. And then we're going to ca concatenate a value here. Actually, why don't we just do it in here? From, name, and then email. And let's break that onto a new line. I think this should be good. So this is the proper syntax of how an email is sent, uh, who it's from. So the name, so the person's name, like Brad, and their email, like your at email.com. So that should be good. Okay, another headers, concatenated value x dash priority one and then break the line now i believe one means high priority whereas zero means no priority i'm pretty sure that's the case this just uh does its best to make sure that the email is sent to your inbox and not s flagged as spam however if somebody is sending you spam if you have a smart inbox then it will likely filter it anyway so another one of these, we're going to say x dash ms mail dash priority. And instead of one, it will be high. And then two line breaks are n. So these are just to set the priority of the, the mail, if it's high priority or not. Again, you don't have to memorize these. Just keep it in a script, copy and paste it for later use. Now we get to do something cool. Send the email. We did all that work to just type this. Mail, 
put some arguments in here. You have some parameters to subject message headers. That is the syntax of the mail function. So you send the mail. First argument is to, then subject, then message, then the headers. Save that. Now we're not quite done. I'm going to remove this last curly brace from our PHP if statement way up here. If is set post contact submit because we don't want it to end there. We need to have some HTML show up after the email was sent. So before you forget, put a PHP else statement and then remove the last closing curly brace close that PHP script because we're going to basically in between the first PHP script and the else statement here we're gonna check to see if the post contact submit was clicked do all this sort of stuff and then show some HTML and then else, we're going to show the contact form. So here we need to show success message after email has sent. Okay. Level five heading. Thanks for contacting Franklin's. Paragraph tag. Please allow 24 hours for a response. And then one more paragraph tag with an A tag in there. We'll go to slash final class button and block. That will be the A tag and we'll say LA quo for the HTML entity. It's like a left error arrow go to home page that will send them to the home page if they click that button link okay so then we have to make sure to close this else statement after our form very simple php boom done and let's just toss an hr in here just for fun okay so let me just show you really quick make sure you got everything php script has a whole bunch of stuff in here checks your header inject injections, submits the form, checks the variables, sends the email. When you're done sending the email, show a success message on the page. Else, if the contact submit button was not pressed, that means nobody filled the form in yet. So just show the form and then close your PHP script right here with the closing curly brace of your if else statement. Very big and juicy, but now we should have a working Form. It is worth noting, if you're using a local host, like a local server on your computer, the email might not send, which means you need to have an actual web server. So if you have a website or a domain, then upload the site there and then try the contact form there. But we're actually going to try it here on localhost. Sometimes it works for me. Okay, here we are on the student contact form. I've changed the email, my, the email variable the who it goes to to my actual email not just your at email.com to see if it actually works so first hit send message message without anything to see if you get the validation perfect all fields required go back so that should work go ahead and fill out the form Subscribe the newsletter. Send message. Let's see what happens. Thanks for contacting Franklin's. Please allow 24 hours for response. Go back to homepage. Now I'm going to check my email. See if I got the email. Here it is. Brad sent you a message via your contact form. Click on it. Here we go. You're at email.com. That's actually a fictional email, but the person would hopefully put their actual email in there to me. So name, Brad, email, your at email.com, message, hello, testing this old form. Please add your at email.com to the mailing list. So there's the basic email message. 
from your contact form. Hopefully you got that working. If not, go through the lecture again and do your best. Try your darndest to get it working. And that basically wraps up the majority of our tutorials and our course, but we have a little bit left. So hang in there and I'll see you in the next lecture.